Apparently your cord catfish have been <clears throat> getting busy and there are white little eggs all over your glass. Babies! So what do you do now? Stay tuned to learn everything you need to know about raising Corydoras fry. Hi, this is a gamer's wife, here to share relationship advice and pet care tips so you can take care of all the members of your family. So if you're new here and want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel and clicking that notification bell. Okay, for most of you, breeding Corydoras is probably an accident, but here's what you can do to encourage it. For me, I had a 20 gallon tank with six adult sized albino Cory catfish. To get them in the mood, condition them by feeding lots of good food and then doing some water changes with water a few degrees cooler than normal. Next thing you know, boom, everybody's getting frisky. The males are chasing the females, doing that T-shaped position, and then the female lays sticky eggs on any old surface around. If you leave the eggs alone, it's like a natural form of population control because most of them will get eaten. However, if you want maximum survival rate, remove the eggs with a credit card or your finger and put them in either a grow out tank or use a smaller container with no holes that floats in the main tank. Add an air stone for gentle water agitation and put a few drops of methylene blue to prevent fungal growth. And then perform daily 50% water changes as needed. The fertilized eggs turn clearish yellow brown whereas the unfertilized eggs turn solid white. Remove the unfertilized eggs so they won't grow fungus that spreads to the fertilized eggs. After they hatch in two to three days, clear out the methylene blue from the water. I've used both breeder baskets and grow out tanks, and I prefer the latter. My plastic breeder basket had slits on the bottom that the fry kept falling out of, and then the mesh breeder basket had corners that the fry kept getting stuck in. The grow out tank I used was just a 10 gallon clear plastic tub I normally use as my quarantine tank. And I feel like the larger volume kept the water cleaner and then gave the fray more swimming room to avoid stunted growth. To keep the water quality high, I did 50% water changes three to four times a week with a large siphon that was covered with a filter media bag and thick rubber band to prevent casualties. To remove fish waste or uneaten food, you can use airline tubing with a chopstick tied to one end and then clamp the other end of the tube into a net or bucket so you can catch any escapees. In the first one to two days, the cory catfish are still feeding off their yolk sac, so don't give them anything to eat. After that, I feed the fry about two to three times a day. Each week, I introduce a new kind of food and then alternate between the different foods for greater variety and nutrition. Week one, I feed Hikari First Bites, which is a very fine dust-like food you can find from Petco. Don't use your fingers, just stick a chopstick in and swirl it around in the water to make the powder sink. I don't use egg yolk because it's too messy and then crushed flakes seem to float too much for the catfish fry to reach. Week two, I add frozen baby brine shrimp, which looks like Mmm, pink liquid when you feed it to them because the particles are so small. Week three, I introduced the straight up raw powder form of Ropashi's Community Plus gel food. I don't bother making the gel until they're a little bigger. And by week four, I introduced frozen Daphnia from my local fish store. Couldn't find any frozen Cyclops, so that's what they got. Once fry can eat adult food and they're too big to be eaten by the other fish, they can join the adults in the big tank, maybe when they're one and a half to three months old. Just note, the longer they spend in the fry tank with no competition for food, the faster and bigger they'll grow. No one likes to talk about culling, but if a fry has a genetic defect that shouldn't be passed on, consider euthanizing that fish. I had an issue where one of my biggest fry had a crooked spine, and while it didn't seem to hinder him, I couldn't in good conscience allow him to spread the disorder to future generations. With my first batch of eggs, I ended up with about 15 healthy fry that were big enough to join the community tank. However, that means my aquarium is kinda on the overstock side. So if you've got a population boom, consider giving away fry to friends, selling them through your local fish club or Craigslist, or giving them away to a fish store where you may or may not get store credit. Question of the day, what's your favorite type of fish to breed and why? Comment below so I can get some ideas for my next breeding project. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button and follow me on Instagram for daily updates. Good luck with your Cory Catfish, and I'll see you next time.